Good morning, everyone. As you all know, this evening the San Sebastian Film Festival will, will award the Donostia Prize to the actor Ricardo Darín. It would be impossible to summarize a brilliant uh, film career when it, it started when he was five years old, and that has turned him into one of the most prestigious and admired actors in Spain as well as in all throughout Latin America. An old friend of the San Sebastian Film Festival, he received the Silver Shell in 2015 for his portrayal of the, act of the character in Truman and a long list of recognitions that he possesses. He will receive the Donostia Award this evening. So therefore, let's commence whatever questions you would like to ask him. And then after this, the cast and crew of the film that this evening will be projected after the La Cordillera, the summit, uh, after he receives his award. Hi. Good morning. How are things? Good morning. Congratulations. Ricardo, over here, yes, thank you. I would like to know, after so many years of working and such a long career, what do you feel re by receiving the Donosti Award? Do you remember when you started, or what does it bring back? Yes, it's those kinds of situations where you're obliged to look back, which normally I, it's a thing that I normally don't do. So, and also, just to see how far I've gone the entire journey. And undoubtedly, you've got to remember with all of the peepers, friends and colleagues, the different circumstances that I've met throughout my career. I'm not a friend of going back into in, in time, but on these kinds of occasions, uh, you've got no other choice, the truth be said. But I'm very, very excited about this. But there are a lot of things that what comes into one's mind. It's very difficult to process them in a very relaxed manner. Hi, good morning. Hola. Ricardo, hello. I would like to ask you, well, do this Donostia Award you feel more Hispanic and Argentinian than ever? Well, I've always felt to a certain extent, and you know that very well because we've talked on several occasions and several opportunities, I've always felt that I've been received in this land in a very warm and almost a family way. I don't need uh, recognitions or awards for this. If one has the good fortune that that occurs, well, one feels it in the street with the people and the direct contact with people, but yes, it is. It's a recognition which is very powerful for me. I am. I am slowly but surely um, um, well, uh, so overcoming those feelings, but as happens in this film festival, which is so dear to me, one finds a lot of people and meets a lot of people, and that's what I was just telling your colleague. One undoubtedly and remembers things in the past and feelings and embraces and love, and, uh, and it's, it's, it's very beautiful. Hi, I'm over here. Good morning. Hi, how are you? Actors, is that just like politicians, you're a mask, you've got a mask, and people are always asking, what's behind that mask? And you're an actor who has always uh, have talked about the almost handy, handcraft, uh, the crafted work of an actor, of acting. Uh, what's that border? It seems that the spectators, sometimes we don't understand the construction that we have of you as, and how you're, how you're always between the mask and the not the wearing the mask. It's great that you don't understand it, but I don't know why you're comparing me with politicians. I suppose it's the law of compensation. No. What you're referring to, to almost handcrafting or doing uh, things almost manual, in a handcrafted manner when I'm acting, the idea is to not lose that, that and to face every project and every story, this is what I mean, without feeling in what is called in your comfort uh, area or your comfort zone. Your comfort zone can be a bad advisor and it can be, and it can fool you. 
And I always like to believe that actors, normally, when we, it's not too clear where we're going, which way we're going, and when we're investigating and getting closer to our the role that we're going to portray to get closer to the story, that's perhaps the most creative side of things. But then, on a set, when the film is being shot, we have to necessarily adjust to the demands of how the function of the storyline. So therefore, the dynamics there are a bit more industrial, so to speak. That's why I defend the everything that we can do prior, beforehand, let us say, to, to defend and conserve that, that area uh, or that zone that where we don't know what we're doing at the hand of our colleagues and, our, and the director, but that's the zone that I believe to be the most fun of my of our profession. That's what I ref was referring to. Hi, Goseno Gortalo from Peru. Hey, a bit of mercy, okay, in the next, next few rounds of the football. Please, please. Uh, what I would like to know is portraying uh, a president, Morgan Freeman has already done it, but you, this is the Argentinian president that you uh, portray. What references did you use when, when you portrayed this role? How you constructed? What did you feed yourself on to construct this character? Well, okay, I had enough, I had enough uh, food in my hard drive, that is to say, because we've seen so many, so many politicians, we've seen so many candidates, so many people trying to allow, trying to tell us what their intentions and their ideas are, and we, I imagine that we've got that we look at everything with a certain, with a fil almost through a filter, that is say, to try to make up, in this case, this character, it was already inside me. The only thing that we really had to bear in mind, and this is what by Santiago and the, uh, the director and the producer and production is to not, to not see anyone who's easily recognized in the last few decades in Argentina, because that would have been giving it a political and ideological color that the story didn't require in itself. And in itself, there's a sort of a critique to the pol universal political system. We didn't want to give it a color which would anchor it into one single area or single zone. Okay, we finished the... No, that was a... Gee, it would have been a short... Okay, Ricardo, yes, over here, over here. Oscar Van Sadi, I can't see you, but I can feel you. I can feel you close on your right, right. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Hello. How are you doing? Very well. Well, I would like to ask you about the award you're receiving. You've always said that you don't give too much importance to awards in your artistic career. I would like to ask you in this case whether it's special because you're the first Latin American actor to receive the Donosti Award. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, that on the one hand, and I'd also would like to ask you as regards how is it to feel, see oneself but being somebody else, which is what you were talking about a bit. Well, let's go slowly but surely. The first thing is I don't consider that the Nosti is a, an award, it's a prize, it's a recognition really, the truth be said, it's not a prize, uh, so to speak. Uh, this is how, uh, that's what you were referring to that I talked about, about, about prizes, has to do with competition. This makes me feel uncomfortable. They say all of a sudden we're obliged to say who's the best or what film was better than another film and so on, and what performance was better than another performance. That luck and chance and that, that, that sort of dynamics uh, in a certain way highlighting or, or one thing to leave this one side, the competition, I, don't, I think that's a bit perverse. That's why I felt very comfortable. That's what I feel uncomfortable about. And what did you ask me about the actor? The dynamics of an actor, yes. How is it to, to see yourself on the screen being somebody else? How does that feel? Well, that's really strange. Actors, what happens to us initially is we can't stand ourselves. Yes, that's true. We like other actors. We don't like ourselves. Because when you see a job which is finished, a film after going through the editing and so on and so forth, 
What normally happens is one looks at the things that you didn't do than, than what you should have done, what I could have done instead of what already appears on the screen in my performances. So therefore, it's a bit per perverse, this system, and also so almost self-destructive, but it does have a certain logic. To see oneself takes a long time to see your character. What happens to me always is that what draws my attention the most is the story. The first thing that really awakens great interest is to know whether the story could have been told as we had planned it, to telling that story from the beginning to the end. Then there are different layers and different interests, like, for example, generally the you, you start to, you reject the possibility of judging yourself, and then you look at how your colleagues have their performances, and then there's no other choice. But after several times, and when you're very lucky, you might like what you did, your performance or not, or hate that performance for the rest of your life. It's very difficult. It's a fine line. The exercise of playing and, and trying to, and performing and being another person, that's part of our job. But to see yourself on the screen can be traumatic as well as well. Okay, let's finish this press conference. No more. Hello. Hello. Hi. Sorry, I have no Spanish. Okay, <laughs> me, me too. <laughs> what first inspired you? Was it in childhood to be an actor? No, no, close, please. Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah. What was the first inspiration or spark for you to be an actor? Was it childhood or family? I, I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, my family, in first time, because uh, my father and my mother th um, was uh, actors and actress, and um, I began to work in theater, in, in movies, on TV shows, when I was uh, eight years old. Uh, I, I don't know, I don't remember the, 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 the first time. One last question. Have you been tempted or have they tempted you to go to Hollywood or to appear in American English language movies? Uh, no entendí nada lo que dijo, pero, pero creo que... I didn't understand everything he said, but I imagine he's saying, and he, look, he thinks I'm very good looking this morning. It's uh, well, interesting for me. It's very, very difficult, you know. Can you hear me? <laughs> it's, it's very difficult, uh, but, um, but I love you. <laughs> Microphone, please. Well, this is at the end of conference. Yes. Oh, Spanish things. Ah, que bien. Yes. Do, are you following Spanish politics? Whether I follow Spanish politics? Well, I've got enough with the Argentinian politics to tell you the truth, but there's no other choice if we're dealing with this issue to at least to be up to date on what's going on here. So thank you very much to not ask me the question that you're going to ask me. Please don't go down that line. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to, this is the end of this press conference. A pity, just when I'm starting to warm up. There is a series of jokes and stories that I was going to tell you. And there's this old lady with a parrot in a ca no, cage. No, sorry, I was joking. Let's now allow the rest of the cast and the crew to appear. And please, a big round of applause for our Donostia Award winner or for his career. Slowly but surely, we're waking up. This is a great moment when nobody knows what we've got to do. So therefore, we, we can reflect, it's time to reflect, to look at our past, our lives in perspective, and so on. Why is your hair so long? Well, because I'm taking these vitamins and I've just realized that I lost control. It was, it was one a week and I was taking one every day. So, um, 
Sí, es para el rodaje de. Sí, es es para el next uh, shoot because no we didn't decide exactly el, what el look the look of the character is going to be that I have to portray. Metafórica de decirlo, claro. But, but yes, even I decide to turn like a, I look a bit like a homeless person, but every day I try to fight against the, this wig that I've got stuck on my head, and and I don't, I can't manage to do it. I know these people, I want to introduce you to these people. Uh, to present uh, the summit just after the uh, Donosti Award presentation this evening. We have the presence here today, apart from the leading actor, Ricardo Darino, obviously, the director, Santiago Mitre, the colleagues in the cast, Dolores Fonsi, and Elena Anaya, and producers, Simón de Santiago and Fernando Babaira. So therefore, let's commence with the questions whenever you deem pertinent. Yes, I can see a hand at the back there. Organize things, President, Mr. President. Yes. Hi, thank you, Ricardo. Well, congratulations for the Donostia Award. I have a question that I want Ricardo and Elena to answer because you're, the, you're doing the less valued professions in the world, bearing in mind, as you ask him in the film, to being a politician is a profession, as you ask in the film. But my question is, why is it so difficult for us, Spanish films, we need films to come from South America. I hope there's more. Why do we, in Spain, is it very difficult to produce films that reflect everything, all of this corruption that's taking place, for example, which was perhaps not the question that Conchita wanted to ask you. Yes, but... but yeah. Okay, you're working as a tandem, I know. You're, you're dealing with political issues and asking political questions. Okay. No, no, I've already said I have everything I had to say. No, no, but please, I can start again. I don't mind. Do I know who you are? The truth is I don't know. It's a question which is quite complicated to answer because, on the other hand, I don't completely agree with what you're just saying. It seems to me that if we review Spanish film, filmography in the last, last few years, you're going to find moments and uh, works that deal, do deal with this issue of corruption, but some of us are a bit more, quite probably more interested in, and we need scriptwriters, for example, uh, to write good projects for directors, and why not say it? I imagine there are many, many ideas and proposals to deal with this issue of corruption, as you've mentioned, but you necessarily have to have the solidarity of a good production team that says, OK, let's go ahead with this project. In this case, quite fortunately, Santiago found in the, the production companies that intervened, he found the necessary backing in order to go ahead with this story that a priori didn't present or didn't smell like industrial type cinema, so therefore that, that's also highly valued. This is, a, con this is a, a meeting between intentions, proposals, acceptance, and solidarity, all of those four concepts, I imagine. But so therefore, I suppose, therefore I exist. Well, okay, I think that you've answered uh, very well, but I would say that it's so difficult to, to make a project like this go ahead, and you've got to be very courageous. Santiago writing this script and following his cinematographic trajectory or career, he has hit the nail on the head, basically, uh, to focus upon. And also his producers, obviously, uh, took the risk to back this project and invited us all to form part of this project. And by the way, I've had a great time. I want to do this more. I want to be Conchita Casanovas again. Uh, I want to be Conchita Casanovas. I like. I love portraying a journalist. Hi. Uh, here on the corner, it's a question for Santiago Mitro and Ric uh, Ricardo Darín. To what extent this is a portrait of the, pol the recent Latin American political politics where we see sexism, 
um, uh, manipulations, relations with the United States. To what extent is that? Could you summarize that? And also I'll ask you about the references with the present day. Ricardo de Nanin said before that you wanted to avoid being any, uh, looking like any recent uh, uh, Argentinian pre uh, president. And there's a Brazilian Chavez as well. And there's a similarity with the, what similarity is there with the current uh, politics? I think you answered, well, you gave me your opinion, which aren't necessarily our opinion. No, the film is completely fiction. It's a strange fiction because it's a fiction that based upon contemporary politics and represents pro uh, problems of contemporary politics and the Latin American region, obviously the tension between the region unity and, and the attempts of breaking uh, that unity at, in the region of different political sectors that exists and that's going to continue to exist unfortunately for many many years or not unfortunately it depends on what everyone uh, has an opinion about uh, or thinks about this for his country or for the world what this will mean for the country of the world well, our idea was that the film was fiction and had to generate its own specific universe in vis-a-vis -vis characters and its political context as well so therefore and that's what we wagered in favor of. And then obviously films are very useful so to enter into dialogue with reality and so that the spectators and the audience can take certain elements and generate their own reflections and, and their own, uh, well, struggle against the context of what's happening in the world or in the country or, or whatever is happening to them. Vis-a-vis -vis the characters, nevertheless, the characters are all invented, but there was something that we thought was great that was just to play with different roles and modify them and change them and and change them, uh, change countries, for example. But that's one of the pleasures of the writing of the script of the, and the characters. And then an actor ends up completes uh, the, the the script when and through his or her performance. Then we got the freedom of the audience or the spectator of finding that connection with possible characters that they may know. But that depends upon the freedom of the spectator that let's hope that we'll never lose that freedom, by the way, as spectators when we watch a film. OK, next question, please. Hi. I would like to ask you by the title of the film in English. It's called The Summit, which is Cumbre, which is what I thought, of, but it's called La Cordillera. Why is it called La Cordillera? Well, the, the title was first in Spanish. Then we put it, then we called it The Summit in English. But I don't understand it because it's not a literal translation. We're going to fight because we discuss this quite a lot. Well, the thing is that La Cordillera has no practically a word that can summarize it, La Cordillera, which is mountain, mountain chain, which was too long and it doesn't sound too good. And, and then we had the story of the kids in the mountain and they were kissing and this, that and the other. No, I thought that was a, that story's been told too much. But yes. Yo, it's a great question because I wanted to be called. I wanted it to be called La Cumbre. That's the only thing that we didn't pay any attention to him. In everything else, we paid attention to what he had to say. Okay, next question, please. You, Ricardo Darina said that you used uh, some background information to construct your performance uh, and your character. And following, he's a he's a politician. He, but he wants to be, uh, he wants, um, um, he's very ethical. Uh, two qu questions. Did you feel comfortable in uh, portraying that, uh, your character? And secondly, there are actors that, and I'm not going to talk about North American politics, but in Europe, there were people who, their notoriety made them think perhaps to representing that sort of role in reality. Would you, would that, let me summarize. Was it comfortable for you to portray this role? I couldn't see you. And your notoriety, for example, would you fall into the temptation of, of entering into politics in real life? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Because Arnold Schwarzenegger was here the other day, and he was the governor of California, right? Yeah, but the truth is no. It, do, it doesn't, no, not at all. Um, the, for those types of decisions or any pretensions, one has to be minimally um, directed in that way. Uh, we've got enough, we artists have got enough on our hands anyway. Um, 
As long as, apart from our specific work, quite often, and as the case of Elena or Dolores and many, many other colleagues, beyond specifically doing our work, if we extend our arms and our, our look upon social issues of public interest and community interest, and that it's quite reasonable to understand that's something that naturally exists. But in my personal case, I don't think I would never take that option because I don't consider myself capable of I have to, to be cold enough, uh, they say, to, to be able to be in a territory which is full of mines. Uh, no, no, I've never thought about it. Now we've got a photographer in front of me. I can't. Don't worry, but um, this has happened many, many times. But don't worry. Um, no, I've never thought of, uh, of taking down, uh, going down that path. Where it was comfortable to portray your character. Mm, well, to work in films is not easy, it's quite complex, it's complicated. If one has the good fortune of having a director who has quite clear in his mind of what he wants and the way to achieve what he wants, well, obviously, your journey is much easier. But there's nothing easy in life, in this life, and comfortable. Well, I feel comfortable at home, only at home, okay? Then everything else is you've got to adapt, you've got to find the ways of portraying and be focused at the same time portraying your character. There are many, many hours of, of using a certain type of energy in order to portray your character and give your performance. But as it's fiction and having the freedom of not having to using anyone as a reference, we find uh, we have a bit more freedom. And that made things a bit easier and much more pleasant in the shooting of the film. Hi, Ricardo. Congratulations for your award as an Argentina. We feel very proud. Uh, because you belong to us, so we say, uh, I want to ask you and Santiago or Dolores a question. At present, where Argentina has spent years in the Mercosur countries, years to, to generate that union, here in Europe, the union seems like it's, it's losing its balance. Yes, it's... Do you believe that films are achieving what politics aren't achieving? That is to say, to unite countries unite cultures with this Ibero-American cinema? Do you think that what films are doing, metaphorically, yes, they are. That is to say, for us, in that case, borders are not that clear cut. Uh, that is to say, all the country, it's a pleasure. Every time that we can cross over and meet colleagues from other countries and and even speaking the same language, we realize that there is a merging, a fusion of cultures and idiosyncrasies. Yes, I feel that marvelous feeling that everywhere, more or less the same things are, are taking place, and we exchange our vibrations, shall we say. I'm not too sure whether films, yes, films help. Just like Santiago said, it's a, a very useful tool to demonstrate the possibilities that may exist. I hope, I hope uh, in this case, but nevertheless, uh, uh, unions are always very fragile, depends on how well they're taken care of, how you feed them, and how they're respected as well. So therefore, in South America, for many years now, we've been dreaming with a, a union which will turn us into a region which is much more much stronger than what it is, bearing in mind the amount of wealth and richness that exists in every sense in that area. And, and it deserves to have a good position, at least uh, to take a position vis-a-vis -vis any discussions at a world level. Next question. Oh, that sounds a bit suspect. Okay. Okay, a question over here for Santiago, the director. There's a moment in the film in which there's a twist in tone where we leave to one side the political satire or the political issues with the character of Dolores and we enter into almost into a film, a mystery film, something which is concerning almost a paranormal thriller and all of a sudden we ask ourselves what, what's going on? in the film. Were you afraid about changing that register or do, that twist in the film? Well, why did you introduce this part? Well, that's what I liked. 
perhaps the project stems from that idea. There's a, there was a feeling along with Mariano when we wrote the script uh, in the portrait of the film, we wanted to we wanted to ma make it a, a sort of like a thriller, a suspense film. We Argentinians, we relate ourselves to politics that the, there's, there are always dark areas that emerge, unfortunately, and very concerning and suspense and mysterious areas. So a political thriller, which was mutating in, in the middle towards uh, an area of suspense in the film and a lot of mystery and and it, it, it imbalanced basically the, the thread of the film, but we thought that was what the film's, that, that was basically the film's objective. But when we started to set up the project, it was practically the center of the film, as of which we started to write all the rest of it. Hi, another question for Santiago Mitre. The political portrait of fiction is very powerful. I'm Spanish. I don't know the background of the Latin American politics. No, me either. Don't ask me. But um, I've got the feeling that I wanted to see more. I wanted to find out more. That was the feeling after seeing the film. So I am asking you whether you have said, no, 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 let's not enter into the in-depth politics because of any issue or because it may bother someone, whether there's any self-censorship. No, not at all. We, how can I say this? But poli uh, political cinema, the, perhaps the word, or political film, apart from, uh, the, from poli po between politics and film, the main word is film. That is to say, the freedom uh, that we had in order, uh, the film in the head of the spectator to get involved in the film when they see it, and, and to take it on and to generate their own questions and their own uh, discussions. I believe that's one of the most important parts that I defend as a director and to hand over cl complex and free materials so that the spectator can take them on and rewrite them if they want uh, or, or discuss uh, um, what they've seen on the screen. Okay, thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, but we don't have enough time. The cast and crew have to leave. They've got another agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you very much to everyone. Thank you, thank you, and good morning to everyone.